mathematics to children with autism let's get into it what is autism autism is a developmental disability that affects how an individual communicates with and relate to other people and how they experience the world around them how much people are affected by autism according to the centers for disease control Autism affects an estimated 1 in 54 children only in the United States. Some characteristics of autism. 1. Difficulty controlling emotions. 2. Trouble understanding language. 3. Need for order, consistency and routine. And 4. Intense obsession with a specific object or instrument. Is there a cure for autism? No, there is no cure for autism, but support can improve the individual's way of life. Autism and Mathematics Study shows that an autistic child may have cognitive strength in mathematics and they tend to solve mathematics problems using different approaches in comparison to a student that doesn't have autism. How to teach math to children with autism. Use child's interest to teach math skills. So they're, if they're interested in arts, role play, music, animation, puzzle, and games, use those to teach them mathematics. Okay? Number two, use a variety of teaching tools to support different learning styles. So the different learning styles are auditory, visual, and kinesthetic. So you're using those to make sure that you're catering for all those learning styles, all right? Three, place maths back on walls so your child can easily refer to them. Or place specific cards relating to topic being taught on the work table. So whatever you're teaching at the moment, you can place cards on the table relating to that, that which you're teaching, all right? Number four, do short session with students except for those who are able to do longer session so you're trying to cut down the amount of time that you keep them in a session and in this session focus mainly on the mastery and retention of this concept being taught all right number five give students things they can touch or feel so anything that you can use in as while you're teaching that they can physically touch or feel that would be good all right number six an autistic child might be partially verbal or nonverbal hence use written approach or sign language to communicate the skills you're teaching so as you're teaching ensure that ensure that whatever method you're using to communicate to them they are able to, to, to understand and interpret what you're saying Number seven, help children to build fine motor skills by having them organize small objects. We're going to look at an example. Here goes it. For this task, we're helping the child to build fine motor skills, all right? And this can be an in-between activity. This can be, this can be a teaching activity. To, to say um, you're teaching the counting aspect as well it can be just an in-between activity giving them a break from something major that they're doing and then you're using this just to teach fine motor skills because they actually need that all right and as I said this can be general for any student any it doesn't matter if they have a, a autism or not this can work for them as well all right 
so we're gonna use one in you realize you have to pick that up with your fingers yeah so you're teaching them to those fine motor skills and you put on one and then we'll go with two yes so it's it's not going to be perfect you know they're going to be some moving around the, 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 the skill is for them to be able to put these on all right so one two and three so this really helps them with the that fine motor skills all right and you can go up to ten uh, one thing I want you to note is to use the same colors right because you don't want them to be confused right so keep the same colors throughout and um if it's a case where um you want to step up the challenge you don't have to line them out like that you can have them all in a container right so everything in a container and then you're expecting them to take out four from the container and put on to four right so you can increase the challenge with whatever activity that you're doing you can break it down for it to be very very simple or you can increase the challenge for the task all right so that was a short video clip on what you could do an example of how you can build on the fine motor skills all right let's continue number eight give praises as often as possible all right yay well done good job all right so we have a video that can show you how to do that as well an activity that you can use when doing that let's look at that video all right so as it relates to giving praises now right so what you can actually do um and uh, this is not limited to the child, whether the child is autistic or have some form of learning difficulty or something. It's not limited. This is something that you can actually do with any child, right? So as you're going through a question, we we'll start here, let's go. When they go to the first step, we have a smile face, yes. So as long as they have made the right the right um choice the right move then you go with a smile face so we're not even using a negative or a positive we're just moving when they make a right move so we're giving them praises and we're letting the praises be all positive right if it's a case where they did not make the right step then we don't move at all you understand we just stay here we wouldn't move and we have some words like nice amazing great brilliant so when you move to nice, you say nice, and then amazing, and then you move up here, you can say amazing again. So as they work through the question, whatever question that they're doing, you can use this, and this can be used with any age group. You can be the one moving along, or you can say, okay, now you can move to the next point on your, your ladder, all right? Okay, so that was the example of uh, an activity that you can do as you praise your child or your student, alright? Great. Number nine, use multiple choice questions instead of asking yes or no questions, alright? And asking yes or no, they might respond yes or they might respond no, and it doesn't really give you the opportunity to know if they really understand, alright? Because you can ask them a question and they're not sure. And because they don't want to feel bad or something of the sort, they just say yes. All right? So you can use open-ended questions or multiple choice questions or and any type questions like that that encourages them to even um, speak and express themselves. All right? Have you, number 10, have your child replicate your action, hence give students questions similar to the example with just one or two changes. Alright, so looking at the example here, you realize that it's add 2 plus 3 and then the question is add 2 plus 4. So, not a lot of changes, okay? 
Number 11, make all instruction clear and concise. So look at the example. Add 2 plus 3. Nothing long, nothing confusing. Just straight to the point. Number 12, teach skills based on the level that they're at. But in whatever you do, ensure a child is adequately challenged. Alright? So, whatever you're teaching, ensure that the child is adequately challenged. And we have a video here that can help you with that. So, we're just going to look at the video. Or, let's get into it. So, you're teaching this child to count, right? And... You have one, two, three. So you would have this table set up already, this um, paper set up already, right? And depending on the level that your child is at, right? One other thing that you can do is to actually have them taking up these. So you can have them just take it up from here and say one. Take up it from here to say that this is two things, two. Take it up from here to say that this is three things, three. Alright, so you could actually have them doing that. What you can do too, you could, depending on the level that they're at, so we're going from basically the basic going up. If it is that you have done that method with them already, what you can do is to have them unsorted to the side somewhere, to the top, to the side, wherever, and then ask them to find just one. So they take up the one, put it there, ask them to find two from the sets that you have to the side. And they put two and then three and they put three keeping it like this where they're actually together not apart and not having single things that they have to go to a group and pick out one or pick out and then pick out two and then pick out three right so in this way it is starting at the most basic I remember that you're trying to teach them based on the level that they're at all right Say for instance, now you're stepping it up. They have moved from this level now. Now you can start. You have one. So we have, say, we have some um, groups. And we're not limiting counting to just strokes on papers and stuff like that. We want them to actually see what the quantity represents. Uh, what does one represent? What does two represent? We want them to actually see. So we're going to take up one one there good we take up two two there good so we say one and then we say one two and they might not be able to take up two so you're gonna say put two so now we have one there we're gonna increase it so we're gonna go two here so it's gonna be one two all right and then we're gonna go with three so three let's count to three one two three grapes all right you can add the numbers at the, the the word for the numbers at the bottom but you don't need to right because the emphasis is really on them identifying the quantity that represents one the quantity that represents two the quantity that represents three all right so as you go teaching skills based on the level that they're at be mindful of these things all right okay great so that was an example all right and we have another example here that we're just going to look at shortly so our topic today is era for Xango, and it's clear for you to specify what the topic is and um, writing it down all right so a topic era for Xango. Before going to this question that this is this is your aim, this is what you're trying to get them to be able to do these questions. You can start off by having three objects, a tr triangle, a circle, and a rectangle, and ask them to select the rectangle from the three objects. So they go ahead and they select the rectangle, right? And uh, upon selecting the rectangle now, the formula is there length times width and what you could have done too is to draw a line along to say this is the length and then this is the width you understand so you could have done that as well so they have a formula yes it's a rectangle for real and the formula we're trying to find area today so it's length times width before going to this question you can have them physically 
this is a rectangle you can have them to even use a measure the, the ruler to measure to say whether this is actually six centimeters or not and this is four don't have to and then you can just have them find the error of this before even using the length times with method to find the area you can have them just counting the squares and that shows that they are looking at here is the total um, coverage of a surface that will help them okay so I'm just looking at the square units that use that is used to cover this surface so you have them just count the squares all right and then you can move to move away from the squares to this aspect and then after doing that you can actually move to the book where you actually have it written like this drawn now so in this case you have something physical something that they can touch right and then you can move on to this question and as I said before is you can increase the difficulty challenge them they might not be able to even get to this point but they understand the concept from here so you focus on the concept focus on 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 building the concept do more examples using this method before even pushing them this far all right great so we have looked at two examples on how we can teach our children based on the level that you're at and different things that we, we can do in between as we try to build on a concept all right let's look at number 13 number 13 remove any element that will distract children and keep environment quiet so as you're seeing here the table is basically just having what they they need for the activity there are other things around the room but they're not using that for this activity all right so you're just having what you're using for the activity and for some children they might respond well to music they're comfortable with music so having a little music in their background would that they like would be a plus right so it's not every child that might want a quiet quiet environment but one might prefer some music or you might have a child that um, uh, say for instance uh, is so connected to an object you can give them that object they can actually be holding on to that object while they work and it brings them that level of comfort all right number 14 encourage your child to express themselves by explaining what they are doing or have a basic conversation with them as they work so whatever you're teaching your child encourage them use the nicest um, words be as gentle as possible very important and uh, encourage them to express themselves the more you express yourself especially when it comes on to expressing and explaining the math concept each time I teach my children or my students a concept if they're able to explain to me what I just explained to them in their words or even if they were they're able to give it back to me the way I gave it to them then I know that yes they have an understanding of the concept that is being taught okay and finally number 15 introduce changes slowly so as you work with your child as you work with your student introduce whatever changes you're going to make do it slowly don't push them too much or too fast all right gradually and that brings us to the end of our session here on teaching math to children with autism i hope that the information here would have enlightened you and that you're able to apply some of the skills mentioned here in your everyday today life teaching your child mathematics or teaching students mathematics remember to like subscribe